What's up, you sexy bitches? It is time for me to go to my MS appointment. I missed my previous one because of reasons. And then I ended up getting a call yesterday saying, hey, we have an opening, we had a cancellation, come in today, which was tomorrow, yesterday, whatever. And that's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go see how this has progressed and see what those scans look like and all that fun jazz and apparently talk about a treatment and I don't know. I think I'm gonna go more of a natural, go exercise, get lots of sun sort of route, but we'll see what happens. Well, I was able to get here all right. Carded fine, no problems, nothing like that. So we'll see how she goes on the way back. But I got like an hour to wait, because I was like, I'm gonna go definitely a lot earlier. I was like, look at my phone, I'm using it. I was, I'm gonna go definitely a lot earlier to make sure that if I had any problems that I'll be able to see if I can fix it and get here. So I got like so much time. Wait. Yeah, I got an, an exactly an hour before my actual appointment. So I'm gonna go find something to do. That looks like a nice thing to do. Go walk by the water. Hopefully that audio quality isn't room for the underwater shots, but that was really cool. I love having a waterproof phone for just that reason. Get some fun shots. Actually, the uh, MS clinic just called me and was like, oh, can you come in early? Because the last person didn't show up, so I don't actually have to wait that full hour. I think I only waited like 20 minutes. So it's a deal. So let's get in there. Okay. So, what's up? Well, your, your MRI shows so it shows a number of new lesions. Um, new? Oh. Yeah. So have you had any new trouble since I started? Yeah. What's that? What was the last stuff I said? Um, hypersensitivity and tingling. Yeah, that, okay. And the soles of the feet, I guess. Yeah. And all the way up to legs to... Yeah, the sternum. Yeah, wrap right around the back. Yeah. Very hypersensitive. Bladder were okay, energy was good, no pain, no previous episode. So it was primarily that episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so what's happened since? It's more of a constant. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I suppose the first time it was like, it, it's an episode, it's there, mm -hmm. it went away. Now it's more... How do I... Yeah. It's a little bit in both arms. My right one is worse. Particularly the thumb... On my right hand is the numbest, but the entire hand feels odd. Was um, that? Did you have that when I saw you last? Was that still? Yeah, there? it was still there, but it's. I don't know if it's gotten worse or if it's gotten like slightly, like ten percent more. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely more noticeable. Mm -hmm. uh, my left is probably about the same. But again, I spend a lot of chair, time in a chair and not enough time in the sun, mm -hmm. which apparently MS and you kind of need to take a lot of Well, you can, take, you can just take vitamin D if, you don't, if you're not in the sun. Yeah. Um, Anything new besides that? Yeah, a lot of little twitching. Not like full on arm, but like little twitching in the mm -hmm. muscle. Happens quite a lot. Mainly in the here, but I get it in like the thighs, the knee, the basically anywhere. But nothing distinctly new like that episode that happened. No, recently. nothing like that. It's just been, and the, the, the little micro twitches have been in, in the like the last two weeks more consistent this last one but you know I'm sure there's other things adding on to it mm -hmm. any trouble with your bladder no, no? bladder's fine erection's fine ejaculation's fine pooing's fine mm. okay so the when we saw you last time 
we, we said you had what's called the clinically isolated syndrome, right? Um, but I thought it was part of MS, just you know, we really had it long enough to really say that definitively. Um, with the MRI change that, that you have between then and now, mm -hmm. we, we, can, we can say for sure that that's what this is. Not that it doesn't really change anything, but you know, from a, a labeling or semantic yeah, perspective. Yeah, yeah, as far as the it. government is caring, yeah, yeah. you had now have it. Yeah. So, you know, you're only 29 years old, right? Sure am. So my, my inclination would be to treat you with medication for MS. Of course. Um, you're a doctor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> With the with the belief that these medications will allow you to function at a normal level or have a, reduce your your likelihood of de developing disability down the road. Define disability and what do people deal with? Well, people deal with a number of things over time with MS. It just depends on the individual. You know, weakness in the legs, balance trouble, cognitive trouble, um, pain, mm -hmm. uh, bowel and bladder dysfunction, right. bladder mostly. Right. Um, so all of those things are, you know, reasonably likely to happen to you, or some of them are reasonably likely to happen to you over time. I would think. So, say. so the medications we, we look at as reducing the likelihood that that will happen, or at the very least reducing the severity of that over time. Right. I mean, they reduce relapses as well, like the attacks happen less often. That's, you know, partly important, but it's really the long-term progression that's, that is what leads to someone's disability. Relapses don't usually lead to disability, but the, it's the progressive component of the disease that does. Relapses are, have a role in, the, in creating disability, but disability does accumulate sort of independent of relapses as well. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I don't have any questions right now. Um, what were you thinking? Well, I mean, you're, it's not like your disease is rip roaring or anything like that. It's you know, you no, got, actually, I, I, that is a bit of a question. On that scale of zero to ten, ten being worst, mm -hmm. where am I on that sliding scale? Well, we, we don't really have a scale. I know everyone's that. different. It's a snowflake disease, but really, like, yeah. you're like, okay, man, that that fucker's bad. Yeah, you're that's that's ten fucking symptoms. Yeah, but I'm like, you're not bad. You're not bad. No, I, I wouldn't think I am, no. but I'm just curious, like, how progressed am I? Not, not progressed at all. I mean, you, you don't have a lot of lesions in your, on, on your scan, but you have, you know, two or three distinctly new ones, you know, so your, your disease is active. Right. You're, you're actively having new inflammatory lesions. Right. Um, you're actively losing brain reserve as we speak. Um, so, Yay. so... So it makes sense to treat you at this point rather than waiting to see how bad you're going to get. Right. Um, because, like I said, you're, you're lo losing neurological reserve as we sit here mm -hmm. um, at a faster rate than I'm losing my neurological reserve um, or anybody else who doesn't have MS. So the goal is to protect your reserve, not wait till the reserve is used up and you're having lots of problems and say, okay, well, let's treat you now. Yeah, I got you. Because you know, it's one of those horse out of the barn kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're offering lesser of two evils. Have take pills and symptoms versus just allow it to possibly, more than likely, mm -hmm. progress worse, and then deal with it then. So, my next question is, what do you want me to take, and what are those symptoms? You mean side effects? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, there, there's generally four medications that I recommend people consider, you know, a so-called first-line therapy. Um, a drug called Rebif, a drug called Copaxone, um, or now Glatec, I guess, um, that are both injectables. Mm -hmm. both very old medications. We know their safety profile inside and out because they've been around for 20, 25 years. Um, and then there are two orals, two pills, one called Abagio and one called Tecfidera, um, which are most people tend to favor those nowadays because it's a pill. They don't have to give themselves an, inject themselves an injection on a regular basis, they take a pill, which is, for most people, more palatable, I guess. Um, the newer medications, we don't have quite have the same safety record because we haven't had them for as long um, as we have the injectables, but they're very safe medications. Um, generally well tolerated. I mean, it, 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 there's no way to know what you're gonna tolerate yeah. until you take this stuff and see. Um, if side effects are a real, you, know, like you don't want to have any, uh, any issue of dealing with any side effects, then Glatec would be the one that's the daily injection, but it has the fewest side effects from a you know, body perspective. You know, it hurts when it goes in, it can leave a red mark and stuff like that, where, where the injection actually goes in. 
Um, but as far as like dizziness or nausea or headaches or whatever you might think of as being a side effect to a medication, the Glatec generally doesn't have any. Mm-hmm. So it's the easiest one from that perspective. Gotcha. It's probably the least potent of the ones that we have. Well, I'd imagine because it's less symptoms, mm-hmm. less drug. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to go, yes, please, mm-hmm. kill me up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go do my own thing, research and talk to my own, I suppose, Facebook group friends mm-hmm. that are in that mm-hmm. MS sort of group to see mm-hmm. what their experience has been. Mm-hmm. What, what, I, what I can do is I can get you to talk to Cheryl, the nurse. She can give you information on those four drugs. Oh, like, cool. like brochures and handouts and well, kind of general experience. information. Yeah. And then and then you can you know take that information and do what you want to do, um, and then you let us know. Cool. I also have a question. What is the price? Well, they're all incredibly expensive. Um, of course. But uh, as long as you have fair pharmacare. Nope. No. You, you, but then you should apply for it. You know, it's a BC government plan for all residents. Oh wait, is that, is that what they call Pharmacare? Yeah. It's just the basic BC resident health plan. That. N- n- well, or it's a drug plan. Not. It's not your. It's not your healthcare card that gets you okay, to see okay, the okay, doctor okay, okay, and all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. It's um, different. It's different. You have to. Yeah, you have to apply for it separately. It doesn't come automatically. Yeah. yeah. Um, you apply online. Just Google Fair Pharmacare or BC Pharmacare, and you apply online. Um, and they can get you set up pretty quickly with mm-hmm. an with a estimated deductible because right. um, it's based on your income. Yep. It's a means-tested yeah, yeah, program. Gotcha. See, and th- th- that's, that's my issue with basically uh, education and the healthcare system is it shouldn't be that price. It just shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Now, I... You say it's exorbitantly expensive. Well, it's, it's very expensive. Yeah. Okay, well, what do you call it very expensive? Well, 100 well, bucks for a bottle? Oh, well, no. Like a, a, a drug like Glatact is probably, I don't know what the price is, like $8,000 a year, $9,000 a year. Um, some of the other ones like Tecfidera and Rebev are up around 20, 22 grand a year. Right. So, that again, that's my issue. In this transaction, mm-hmm. you're a salesman. No, I'm not. I don't, I don't, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Whether you do or don't. You, 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 you educated yourself, you believe what you do, you, you, you pass on that knowledge as best mm-hmm. as you can. Mm-hmm. You are trying to convince me that your way is better than anything else. So, hmm. But my, my issue is ho- has always been power and money. Is mm-hmm. Who's gaining it, who's losing it, and why is it happening? Mm-hmm. Which is my problem with the education system is that if our problem with society is education, it should be given out a lot freer. And especially when it comes to healthcare, if it's basically of like, other humans want humans to live longer. Yes, you need to make a profit. No, not to that degree. You do not have to use patents to scam people like that. You don't have to do. Okay, this, this is not, this I know, I know, but my, that's still my issue. Is it, it's it's pharma and mm-hmm. it's money and it's power, and they're like, no, you. Anyway, that's true. That any industry. You can't, oh, you yes, can't it is. An industry that isn't like that. No, it, that's that's true. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it's just it's just an interesting thing, that I don't know. It's, it's just very interesting to me, like how society runs like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna go talk to people. Mm-hmm. How long ish do I have to decide? Well, there's no there's no specific time frame. Well, um, of course, but the I mean, if you take six months, you take a year, you take six days. You know, whenever no, you decide. Um, if you decide that you know what I don't want to go on treatment right now, that's fine. Um, and then we would just review you again in a year. See I'd imagine do. quite a few people go that route. So how do they manage? Go the route of not treating. Yeah, a small minority go untreated. Um, the majority of people treat. Well, when you say untreated, you mean pharmaceutical untreated. Yeah, I mean untreated. Yeah, there there isn't any yeah. other treatment. I don't. Treatment. I, yeah. I, I, I totally other understand. Than, other than physical exercise and you know, Eat, eating better, like, but that kind of stuff. Yeah. yes, that's what I mean by, by 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 treatment. But like, how many people decide to just say, "Screw it, I'm going to go live my life." However, as I'm going to live my life, and then this disease takes over whenever. What percentage of people that I'm I just curious, how many people actually do that? Well, I, I I don't have the number in my head, but I'd say probably less than one in ten. If I recommend treatment, less than one in ten say I don't want to be on treatment. Probably it would be less than one. In 10. Ever, or at a certain time frame. Again, I, I don't have I, I don't I can't give you a specific number, but what percentage 
delay a year or two what percentage go on right now. Yeah, it the, could the, stagnate the, the disease the, the, or it could the, just... The vast majority of people that I recommend going on treatment end up on treatment. I would imagine eventually. Uh, interesting. I don't know. Side effects scare me. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, quality of life, not the quantity. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How long does it usually take for this disease to kill someone? Or does it? It, it, it infrequently kills people. So it's just more of it's just a massive discomfort. Yeah, and, and it depends on the individual. Some people have fairly benign MS and don't end up with much trouble throughout their entire life. Yeah. Other Which people is... are bed bound in six or eight years from diagnosis. They're bed bound. So yeah, that it, doesn't it, seem like a life to live. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I would agree. I would agree. Um, and we think the medications, or we believe the medications, make a difference. I mean, I wouldn't recommend. Oh, of them course. I mean. Huh. Interesting. Interesting, though. Um, did you have anything else that you needed to go over? No, no. I mean, I, I think you should talk to Cheryl about the, about the options. Um, and then you can ponder take, away. Take that information and, and use it however you see fit. And then let us know what you think. Oh, cool. Cool. Uh, where are those scans? Oh, Do you have here? them here? Yeah, I can show them to you. Yeah. How long was school for you? Uh, after high school, I did 13 years. Um, so, wow. so this is your new scan on the left, old scan on the right. Technology's changed a little bit because you were at Royal Inland for the first one, KGH for the next one. Um, there was one more detail? Yeah, the, the KGH software is a little different, um, but you can still see you know, a new spot there. Look at the same location on your old scan, right about there. So you can see this area right there. Oh yeah. It wasn't there before. Oh. Okay. Nifty. Where are the other ones? Yeah, that's probably not new. Again, the scanning technique is a little different. This is probably new. That's where there'd be two different techniques for industry standard. But I guess it's two different technologies. Well, no, it's just it's just, it's just software and physics. Um, exactly. Over time, that's what confuses me. You yeah. think everything be standardized? Well, the thing is, what they're standardized until someone <laughs> until someone figures out how to do something better, better. right? I mean, cars were built in a standard way in the 1960s, but they're better now. Just <laughs> hope. Um, might be new here. Again, because of technique, you're not 100% certain. Um, but then there's another fairly definite one going one way. That is so cool. That one. See, that one was there before. Oh, yeah. So even though they've put a little arrow on it, it's not new. So exactly how big are these? Because you're, like, layering the brain here, yeah, are you? Yeah, this one looks new here. This is a, a scale, so this is 50 millimeters. So this is about five millimeters across. Wow. Give or take. Quite large. How deep though? I mean, this one's probably new here. circled here you can see this little white spot there yep which is again based on the physics of this particular sequence that's that means it's new it wouldn't have been there for six months or something because um, the old old spots don't show up on this particular set of pictures only new spots show up right um, and then you can see this bright new spot there as well and that's that one. Mm -hmm. Just 
definitely do as well. So they've got at least two new ones and probably more. I would think so. Yeah. And they're in, they're in fairly typical. Oh, really? There's actual locations where that's just where the lesions usually grow? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -da -ba -da. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of other questions. Just well, what I'll do. What I'll do then is I'll get Cheryl to have a chat with you yep. about, about the full the four that I consider to be first line, um, and then you can use that information and let us know what, what you want to do. Cool. How long until my next scan? Well, it, it depends. Um, if you're on treatment, then we would do scans to clarify whether or not the new lesion formation has stopped. If you elect to be untreated, then the scans aren't particularly relevant. Because if you're not treating, then your, your, your disease will get worse, you will have new lesions. So doing a test to determine something that you already know is going to be there and no outcome will happen based on the results of the test, then it, it, it loses its, its importance, right? I mean, tests are done because you want to make a decision based on what you found. I mean, that's the purpose of a test. Diagnose, what are we going to do about this, etc. To simply watch something happen that we know is happening yes, with, with, with the technology, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Gotcha. Gotcha. And what kind of results have been seen from dietary changing and exercise like well the, the, the only thing that's been I mean beyond medications the only thing that's been sort of scientifically demonstrated to affect how people progress with their MS is basically physical exercise yeah because there's one dude that I talked to basically he's just he was on a lot of these drugs and then he forgot to get more of them felt a lot better tried a different drug same thing happened, and in that same time of the second drug, he just started exercising and eating better, and mm -hmm. he's like, fuck these drugs. Yeah, no, healthy, active lifestyle and being physically active is, is very important, there's no doubt. Um, it makes your body just better. I mean, everybody, of course it does. Even in the absence of any disease, people who eat well and exercise feel better, can do more, have more stamina, they sleep better. All kinds of things get better when you do that. That doesn't translate necessarily into a treatment of the actual condition, however. It just makes you a better human being, right? So there's no, there hasn't been particularly any clinical trials of watching these people live their life the way they want it, not on drugs, and just see how they do. Well, there there are natural history studies where they just where they look at a group of people who have not been treated or or the natural history studies before there was treatment like a community sort of like no, you, okay, you can see it from like five years old to 80 sort of deal well, no, or there, it'd be people involved in ms clinics um like vancouver has natural history studies following people over you know many years even before treatment was oh, yeah. available and you have a sense of how they do you can follow groups of people who are on treatment to follow up and see how they do they would appear to do somewhat better, but it's a, the, the comparisons are very difficult to make. You know, comparing a group of people from 1960 to 1980 and compare them to a group of people from 1990 to 2010 and say, okay, well, this group did this way and this group did this way, you don't know that they're the same groups. Well, the way of life was different. Yeah. So it's very difficult to make those sorts of comparisons. But there, there, there are no randomized trials of following people off treatment. I mean, they, who, it's a question of who's going to do that trial. Well, I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, what about erections? Does it the does, does, does the disease affect the, that? Absolutely. I would imagine yeah. it do. Yeah. yeah. You know, because twenty nine, motherfucker. I'm just <laughs> not, 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 not necessarily, but 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 have to have bowel and bladder dysfunction, erectile dysfunction would not be unusual. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean. I don't know if I, got, I don't really have a lot of questions. Each drug is different in the way it's delivered, the frequency of um, dosing, and side effect profile. Right. So do you want me to highlight those for you? Yes. Okay. So let's start with, I always start with the injectables. Um, some people prefer injectables because they've been around a lot longer. You know, we've been using them since the 90s. 
So they're generally very safe. They have a pretty standard side effect profile. All medications either work or they don't for each individual. Right. Um, it depends on you and your disease. So people have been on e any of these four medications and done well. People have also been on any of these four medications and not done well and needed to change, change to something else. So you never really know until you try. But some people um, feel the orals were a little newer. They're maybe less comfortable with that, so they tend to go along with an injectable. Counter to that, if people don't want to have anything to do with needles, they don't really want to discuss those, and then they, we would look at these. But these are some of the ways that people make decisions on how they go with their therapy. Right. So Rebif is um, uh, uh, interferon medication, which means that it has a, a kind of a standard side effect profile that um, people will develop flu-like uh, symptoms post-injection. Um, so there are two other um, interferon injectables, but we just tend not to use them anymore. We've kind of whittled it down to these are sort of the most popular. Um, so Rebif is injected three times a week. So people will have it Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Injected so by they're not, who? You inject it by yourself. It's given subcutaneously, so it's shallow underneath the skin. So that's more likely to cause injection site reactions where you can get bruising and bumps and mumps and redness and things like that. So that goes along with injecting medications. But it is only three times a week, so there's less days you're injecting than are. But people will, it's very likely and very common, people experience flu-like symptoms when they first start the therapy that does get better over time. But we could be talking three to six months. Some people will get it worse than others. Yeah, I was talking to a dude who had it for six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some, sometimes for people it's part of therapy as long as they're on it, okay? Yeah, so okay. ways they're that we it. try to alleviate that or help accommodate that is that people will inject at nighttime, so in the evening, and then go to bed, sleep through some of that. Um, we mm -hmm. don't start you at full dose. We start you at a portion of the dose and gradually increase it over the month so right. that your body kind of gets used to it. And then people get used to taking Tylenol or ibuprofen before their injection, um, go to bed, have some by the bedside, take it again, and you take it into the next day as long as you need that, okay? So the other part of most of the therapies except this one is that you have to have regular blood work done. It can um, throw some of your red white blood cells out of whack or your liver enzymes. So that's part of most therapies um, where you get a baseline blood test done before you start. Um, and then for the first six months, you're doing it monthly. And after that, it's just every six months. If there's an issue with that, we let you know. And uh, sometimes we have to have you check it a bit more um, frequently, but generally it's, it's um, usually well tolerated that way. So that's Rebif. These medications that are injectable, um, you get different devices or things to help you give the injection. So some people like to just use a plain syringe and give it themselves. But this uh, particular one has two devices, uh, more of a little machine that you use, and actually with this one, you use a cartridge. So if people are kind of freaked out by the whole look of syringes and needles and things, it isn't a typical syringe. It's a cartridge that goes in there just like what uh, diabetics use. The needle is small, it attaches here. You really don't ever see it. And the machine itself helps you deliver the medication. This one is a more automatic thing where you, it's in there, you have to attach the needle and, and give it to you. But you can have the use of those devices to inject your medication. So that's Rebif. Um, Glatect is um, <clears throat> our newer product um, of our Glatirmer. So we've used Glatirmer for a long time, um, but we've been using a different brand named Copaxone. The government went to this product because it's cheaper. So um, it is a daily injection, uh, subcutaneous. Um, it does not have any systemic side effects like this with the flu-like symptoms. So when I mean flu, I mean like fever, chills, um, aches, pains, not like nausea, See, vomiting. That's like the that. weirdest yeah. thing. Why are humans willing to put up with that feeling like shit for 50 years than just having a good 20? Well, it is it is a bit of a toss-up, right? Yeah, you're exactly right. Like, so why? So with this one, there's no systemic side effects, and um, this is also the only therapy where you don't have to have any blood work done. So really, your main side effect is just um, injection site reactions and rotating all of your sites well to keep your skin healthy. <laughs> <laughs> you rotate your sites. Well, 
That's I know, I know, okay. but it was just hilarious. So, um, other than um, now, Copaxone is still available, but generally, if people don't have coverage, they can't use it. But Copaxone itself has a three time a week injection where it's a double dose and it's just a three time a week. Now, that's not covered by Pharmacare. So, again, it is an option for people, but if they have private insurance, but otherwise, it's you know, you, you're dealing with this. Okay, so those are those two. I'm just giving you the highlights. I'm not going to get involved with. I know you're not really on board, and I'm not pushing anything. I'm, I'm really just not. Information. It's, it's like there's so many side effects, and then, like, it's disgusting how education and medicine is treated in this country. How it's like any other business for nothing but basic profit. Which is cool, because you absolutely need to pay people. You, you need to make that economy go. But it doesn't need to be to the degree that it is. And that's just the thing I just have about pharma in general. Yeah, and a lot of people do. Um, you know, whether you decide to choose your disease or treat your disease <laughs> or not. Treat your disease. Sorry, that was I choose. No, no, I choose not this one. I choose that one. It's up to you whether you want to treat your disease. Of course. So when I'm taught, I, I have a whole big spiel. We could sit here and talk for a long time. I don't want to get into this whole pharma thing. It's really up to you. I don't care if you treat or not. It's not you, I, exactly. Well, and I don't mean that. I, I actually do care, but... Um, there's basic human compassion, and then there's something yeah. that you can't do anything about yeah. because it's my choice. What I always tell people is that choosing not to go on a medication is, is an option for you. MS is not a fatal disease. These treatments don't cure your disease. When the doctor recommends it, what I think is that we are offering you options and choices that we think are in your best interest. Of course. But you have to be the one to make that decision and move forward, right? I also say no decision is final. So if you choose to go on a therapy or not go on a therapy or try a therapy that you don't like, you can always change your mind. And you can change your mind at any point in time, last last minute, you know, even if you say, okay, let's go ahead with this and then you get through the process and then you decide to change your mind, you certainly can do that. Um, so, um, but the point of therapy, the overall point of therapy uh, of the purpose of these medications is to slow progression of the disease mm -hmm. um, and again remember what I said is it it's variable for each and every individual that that goes on the medications and whether the medications work for you what there's sort of two points of looking at medications is how well does it treat your disease as well as how tolerable is it to you so even though we talk about side effects doesn't mean they always happen um, and when we talk about side effects, that puts that in the forefront for most people. What they often do is lose track of what can this disease do to me over time? And they think that the side effects are worse than the outcome of the disease. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that are in a very bad shape with their disease, maybe despite treatment or in the absence of treatment. It's also hard to kind of recognize that right now you feel good and you can't, we can't tell what your disease is doing, but that doesn't mean it's not continually uh, accumulating and causing damage in your body that may not be evident right now, but it will catch up with you down the road. And so you're treating, you're not treating for today and how you it's feel tomorrow. today. It's yeah. for 10 or 20 or 15 years down the road, which is a hard concept. And in the meantime, I agree with you, in the days that all we had were these injectable medications and you felt way worse, on your treatment than, than not, it, it, it was a hard sell. And saying that, mm, it'll you know, reduce your relapses by 30%. Yeah, absolutely, that is, that is a tough thing. Um, however, we have lots more options now. Um, we get started on any of these medications and whether you tolerate them or they help your disease, um, if you don't tolerate them, you might be saying, hey, I, I'm, I've done this lots. People are on a medication, they're very happy. I say, you have to stop your drug because it's causing ha hell with your liver or something like that. Oh, they don't want to switch their, disease, their drug because they're doing so good. Then we have alternate medications and some that get stronger and more potent, have more side effect profile, but actually manage the disease quite a bit better. So this is the it this is the environment. How it is for them. This is the environment of which we're living in today with MS, and you know, um, 
some people are quite clear on what they want to do and other people are not. So, um, you know, it's the, these are just some of the concepts or the things that, um, you know, you need to kind of take with you and sort of figure out and sort out what you want to do. And when you're ready, you're ready. And if you're not ready, then we just kind of, kind of wait. But what I want to say is that our medications don't go backwards. So meaning that if you start a medication, it's to help prevent anything that's happening from here on in. But anything that is already there is there yeah. and it's not going anywhere. And the longer you wait, if Maybe. your disease isn't doing a lot, you know, which sometimes, do you know what? Not everybody needs medication. But we don't know who to, how, we can't look at you and say, you're going to yeah, do good, yeah, you yeah. don't need, you don't need this, right? Um, so we have to default and say, Everyone you know, needs it. I would recommend treatment, okay? Because if we didn't, then you said, well, I was at, why didn't you recommend We have to treat everybody the same and say, I recommend treatment. And then whether it's up to you, you want to go ahead and do that, then that's up to you. And when you want to do that. And some people need time. You know, some people need time to sort of let that sink in and absorb and decide where they're going to be and things like that. So, um, but, but I'm giving you kind of the, the details of the medication, but please take it in the whole context of what is what, what we're talking about kind of globally and, you know, wanting to slow progression over time and sort of treating what's underlying that you can't tell because people do, you know, get tripped up. You, you're not having any relapses. You feel pretty good. Doesn't mean that the disease isn't active, but we don't really know how active, except for in your case, we do because we did another MRI that shows, yes, there's active lesions right now. That was kind of my question mm -hmm. to the good doctor is like, how often is there a follow up for an MRI? And he's like, unless you're getting treatment, you don't get one. It depends like, on. Are you for fucking real? It depends on, well, I mean, if you just keep coming back year after year and he keeps saying, I want you to go on treatment, well, I don't want to go on treatment. I just want another MRI. He's probably going to stop saying, I'm not going to keep scanning you when my recommendation is going to be the same because really, the disease well, if it's active now the thing is, I don't care about yeah. his recommendation yeah. I care about seeing the results and how yeah. it's progressing for myself yeah that's well, what I care when about. you're on treatment then we're going to rescan you to make sure it's doing what it's doing and and there will be a schedule I mean the whole issue of doing scans and the whole issue of diagnosing and monitoring and surveillance of the disease is ever changing and so it's different today than it was even two three four Four or five years ago, yeah. but but as so, it's an evolution. Yeah, of, technology of doubles every so many years. Yeah, exactly. So um, things are are very active in in the area. So when you go on a therapy, or if you choose to go on a therapy, generally what happens is we would follow you in six months. Then they would repeat an MRI at some interval that they think is reasonable, and then we follow you yearly because you have to come back and get your medications, and then there will be somewhat follow up depending on what happens, right? So. Um, um, th that will happen over time. Um, anyway, so that that's part of it as well. That that does evolve over time. So if you chose not to come and go with therapy, then we would see you next year, and see what's happening in in that in between. In the in between, if something were to happen, say you were to have another relapse or something like that, we want to know that because we'd bring you in, but the, for the purpose of to have this discussion again. So if you were, again, still not wanting to go on therapy, we could still bring you in and, and do that. But that would be the only logical next step really to do because the, the purpose, so again, the treatments themselves, they are targeted on relapses. That's what they do. So all of the treatments have been tested for reduction in relapse rate, improvement on imaging, and slowing progression of the disease. However, the whole slowing progression when they do clinical trials they're like a two-year thing right mm -hmm. so they're kind of a two two-year uh slowing progression of a disease that lasts a lifetime yes yeah, so from that perspective it's like whatever i know but, but yeah. from imaging and relapses so this gets kind of tricky because the average relapse for somebody with ms is one every two years so now what we're saying these these therapies are reducing that to one every four years or something like that and how it plays out is just the way it's going to play out in reality, right? So some people can have a few years where they have maybe more frequent relapses, and then after that, they, they don't have any for five years or something like that, you know? But it's it's going to kind of mix and vary for every individual. So that that's kind of the concept. So, so basically, 
if I would like a yearly MRI, it's a no go unless I take your treatment or pay for it. I don't. So. I don't know. I'm not the one that orders MRI. That's a discussion for him. Okay. Well, I'd like so to. So whatever, ask him. whatever he told you. I don't think we. Act, I actually asked that directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did sort of indirectly anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Tecfidera is a pill uh, capsule you take twice a day. The main side effects for it are flushing, where people will um, feel warm and tingly and flush, actually turn red, and they can get some GI upset. So generally we do a bit of a titration with that one as well, where we gradually increase the dose to help accommodate with those symptoms. In this case, compared to the Rebif, it's more likely people with the orals don't get side effects as opposed to what happens with the Rebif. With we, the, the flu-like symptoms are really quite common. But in this case, most people don't get side effects and do quite well. But it is the GI and the flushing. And this one does require ongoing blood work as well. Um, so you do the baseline monthly for six months and then every three months ongoing. Some people that take Tecfidera, their lymphocyte count drops. So again, that's a reason that we can end up taking people off the drug. And so we do a little bit more closely monitoring. Sorry, their, their, what count? their lymphocyte count, which is oh, part of your white liver. blood cells. No, it's part of your white, white. blood cells. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then Abagio is just that little pill there. It's a once a day pill. And just like with the Glatec, no sort of titration, just get on it and go. And this one can cause a bit of GI upset as well or temporary hair thinning. This one also um, needs ongoing blood work that is really the same as the Rebif. Interesting. Yeah. So that's just sort of the Coles Notes version on, on all of the sort of the ins and outs of the specifics. Of course, this is all glossy and beautiful, and this is your pharma working on you here. Yeah, by, no kidding. Look how many the, yeah, dollars into, went into that. Into yeah. All of that, we right? need to get lots more <laughs> of free money just yeah. to be able to, to do more. Well, this isn't, I can't believe. this isn't free money. This is this is private. This is private stuff that goes into that. So that's just like any business that you walk out the door and you're buying. No, no, no. I, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, how many nonprofit charities are actually owned by massive pharmaceutical companies? Well, I don't know about oh. that. Oh, so bad. Huh? Okay. If you actually look at the where the amount of money comes from cancer, for the you know the cancer donation and where it goes, it's. Oh, it makes you sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not here to discuss that. No, no. So I've kind of given you the background of sort of the purpose of treatment and, and, you know, some of the things to think about and consider. These are kind of considered our standard first line options. First line? Okay, what are the, what are the advanced? Well, I don't need to give you all of those, do I? I was just curious. Yeah. How many are there? There's 13 treatments, I think. Wow. So if you eat all of the therapies, these included, and a couple of extra that, you know, we don't sort of talk about or use as frequently, they're all listed on the MS Society website. It's kind of a bugger to get to that page. It's oh, yeah? kind of weird. It's not, not very intuitive, but they're all listed there, and they talk about the all of the medications. They all have support companies. They indicate that. I think they refer to their... Um, pivotal trials, all of their initial studies for all of them. Um, that's all there on the website. So if you, that's a good place to start. And then I think there's links and clicks um, to go through for that. Interesting. Then what I will do, not, normally what I do is uh, send you away with that. And uh, after a month or a couple of months, if I haven't heard from you, I'll check in. But I'm going to leave it up to you that if you want to move ahead with anything, you let me know. Um, and otherwise, so what generally happens if you start a therapy, as I said, we have you come back in six months, so we see how you're doing with it and how it's working for you, and then you come back in six months again. So at this point in time, I will just kind of leave it that I'm thinking more you're leaning against, but if I hear from you, that's fine. I'll have a and good so, 20 years and see what happens after that. And so we'll plan, we'll plan to see you in a year, but if you do change your mind and go on a therapy, then we would, we would change that. God, I can't believe how much effort went into making these. Mm -hmm. Just like, like, like I, I, I do a lot of studying of um, marketing, mm -hmm. and this is just beautiful. <laughs> this is marketing. You bet. The, you bet. They've got. Uh, they've got marketing behind. Oh them. boy, do they ever! I mean, to convince someone, like, and don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. like everyone needs something to help them whatever it is but like to yeah. con actually convince someone that death side effect 
is a possibly good side effect compared to having whatever you use you have like yeah. how do you convince someone that's insane yeah. and then obviously these things are clinically trialed at least to some degree so how did you actually get that death one i'm assuming you actually had to test it on humans so where'd that death yeah. who'd you die for that yeah. Now, you have to remember that in trials, they, they have to record everything, and sometimes they're not related to treatment, but sometimes they are. So people in uh, clinical trial die from other reasons other than uh, their disease. But like they have it, to say it. Yeah, yeah, but like. they're included in there. But sometimes, yes, there can be very nasty things that happen, but that's... that's yeah, you know, and then you have to take never, another pill for that, and another pill for that, and all of a sudden you're on five, ten pills. You know, we're like, pre- no, never mind. the whole, like, the whole from an MS perspective and this perspective, very much more conservative than a lot of other disease processes. Oh, like yeah? That. Rheumatology, weight, I mean, most of these medications, they're, the rheumatology, like the potent ones that we use, they've been using in rheumatology for a long time, or oh, cancer, exactly or things like that. So that's like, um, 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 well, rheumatologic things like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or that type of thing. What um, exactly does rheumatoid attack? Rheumatoid attacks different things. So in rheumatoid arthritis, it's the joints, right? right. Lupus is connective tissue throughout right. the body, things like that. So um, they, they use more, their drugs are way more potent than what we use. Interesting. Um, so that's um, another thing. I mean, you guys, there's probably a molecular structure. Actually, that's probably a trade secret. Um, of the drug? Well, no, no. I'm just curious what the actual ingredients are because if it's designed to do something, and many well, the, of these drugs the are designed you off can, of something else. You can find the ingredients. Um, all you have to do is look at their monograph, their product monograph, and it says exactly what's in everything. The mechanism of actions, that's maybe more what you're talking about is how did they work. Um, mm, no, I don't know. What are they actually made from? Because a lot of these... Pills are made from nature. It's just been enhanced to be more potent. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious mm-hmm. what those were, what the research was actually based off. Of. Well, like I say, you can look up the monograph of all of the, uh, it will say exactly what's in it. Tecfidera um, dimethylfumarate um, is sort of a secondary product to, now just a minute, I haven't used this for a long time, um, fumarate. I think it was fumarate that was big. So this is kind of a byproduct of an old product called fumarate. And fumarate was used, I think, more in rheumatology. Um, and again, like if you look at the information on fumarate, there are probably more about um, things that can happen from that drug. But in those areas like cancer, like rheumatology, usually you're talking about more potent products. And so some of the negative side effects can be much more devastating. So again, that's kind of the whole idea with MS kind of being a bit more conservative with things like that. Teraflu, no, no, dimeth, no. Teraflunamide. No, I'm getting that wrong. Teraflunamide is an alternate project with. Who comes up with these this names? This one's different. This one's different again. This was a byproduct again. So, it, like a lot of these, they're kind of newly used in MS, but there's kind of a, a, a older kind of version of a product used in some other area. This was something else. I can't remember what it was. But all of these. Let me see if I've got. If I don't have the monographs on my, I always just look them up. But I'll, I'll give you an example where you can see exactly what the product is made of. In fact, it might actually say it in here. Really? That'd be cool. Handy. Um, oh, maybe it doesn't. Hmm. Oh, it might not say it in there. Here's a box for example. That's everything that's in it. So... Cornstarch, I love it. First ingredient, cornstarch. <laughs> it's like in everything else. So it all, if you go into each monograph of all products, it'll tell you exactly everything that's monograph. in Monograph, that's what they're Product called? Product monograph. All medications have that. Oh, interesting. Even Tylenol. Really? So if you want to see whatever's in there, we're not hiding anything. It's all in here. You can go ahead and read exactly everything that it is. This kind of is the um, sort of when it's approved for use. It, it has to, this is all information about who can use it, what the indications are for, what the side effects are, um, you know, um, post-marketing, pre-marketing, um, and then it'll get into, see here would be information on the studies and the trials, and then this end up at, at the back is usually sort of patient consumer information. Mm. So that will generally be, you can find one of those, and I think if you go on the MS Society website, I think there might be a link to monographs of all of the products. Nifty. Yeah. 
So that's a good place to start if you're wanting to get more info on info. everything. Absolutely. Yep. I have no idea what any of this means, but <laughs> yeah, it's like the worst thing about. Oh, look, you have a disease. Now go learn everything about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Um, so you can kind of take your time to cut. Well, no, you're not taking my. Oh, sorry. Back. I thought that was me. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> you can if you just Google like Tech for because I don't have a copy of Tech for I always just Google it and then um, download yeah, it and then you can look through it that way. So they're they're all there. And then like I say, there's all the other therapies there. But when if you look at what like is there a reason why we didn't talk about some of the ones on the MS Society? Is some of them are second line. You have to try one of these and fail one or be second intolerant of two or, or that kind of thing. So and usually the basis for that is well not usually part of it is the way it's it was it's designed to be used. Some of them just are not meant to be a first line, <laughs> and others it has to do with funding. So it's more how the government lets us use them. Mm. They're not going to fund a hot, more potent drug until you've tried this and failed and that kind of thing. So there's kind of a two, two strong approach. And as far as how we go, we we are not, we aren't, um, you know, with the medications. We just know we've got this whole slew of thing. Um, we look at it like we want to find the drug, like I said, that works for you, that you tolerate. Um, and you know what also when we're looking at kind of initiating a drug we have to kind of consider what's going to work for you what fits for with you in your lifestyle what side effects are if if you're bothered by a particular side effect of something and it's going to bother you every day you're taking that injection or taking that pill and worry about it then that's not the right drug for you if you have side effects that you're struggling with we kind of go well don't keep taking that let's find something else so again our our job is sorting out what what is going to be tolerable for you but also keep your drug and or your disease in check got it <laughs> okay okay <laughs> all right and you've got my card so if you have any questions you want to discuss this further let me know and otherwise we'll just let it ride for now and then uh, if we haven't heard from you by next year we'll just see you around this time next year uh, I'm assuming you'll give me a call yeah yep. so we usually are booking a month or two in advance Okay, if anything changes or comes up through the year, they'll let me know. Okay. We must never stop so, yeah. I don't really know what to do, what to make of it, what to anything. Um, basically, I'm going to go actually start regularly exercising, eating a lot better, drinking like nettle tea, eating specific herbs, I guess. But, man, fuck that. Oh my god, I left my coffee cup on my car the entire time. I am the best. I think that went kind of interesting, though. Um, I may have been a bit dickish and aggressive, but basically, like, they're trained and taught. Like, okay, they're educated. I ain't. But, at the same time, they're also educated, like, on a system that wants to sell you shit at exorbitant prices for profit. And I just, I'm like, if there wasn't money, greed, and power associated with the medical industry like that, I'd be like, alright, doc, sign me up, you obviously know best, like, human, humanity is at the peak of importance I mean, that's my biggest problem is that there's just too much money in it it's basically a business for profit not for the betterment of humanity because you want to make humanity less sick better change it whatever it is but and and you can't have something like that that just doesn't make money it's not sustainable obviously you need some something to keep those wheels turning and greased but it just shouldn't be that expensive. School should not be that expensive. Healthcare should not be that expensive. I just don't agree with it. Like, it, 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 if you're in an industry that it is literally for the betterment of humanity, should you be forcing people to pay, what, like 1300 bucks for an EpiPen? Or life-saving drugs? 
or even the drugs that, like for me, I don't need them to live just to be less shitty in 20-ish years. But I don't want to do it because I don't trust it because of the type of industry that it is. That's basically the problem is I don't trust the fucking industry. Anyway, that was interesting. Ramble over. Let's get home.